to our September Supervisors Meeting. I'll now call the meeting to order and ask you to join the board as we stand and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're sorry to inform you that Carol had an had a emer uh, emergency appointment. I think one of the boys needed an appointment or a doctor's visit or something. So she is going to be late. And Mike has offered to fill in for her. No <laughs> problem. So at this time, I'll ask for the roll call of the gentleman at the table here. Okay. Uh, Chairman Jerry Long. Here. Uh, Arthur Zerby. Here. Mel Boyd. Here. Michael Reiner is here. Bill Cassidy. Here. Carol Martin is absent. Okay. Okay, at this time uh, we'll have an open community session. I've been setting the limit of four minutes each. And if we have extra time, we can um, do a second round. So at this time, uh, Dave. Hello. That was it last month. Where a, uh, a reading kennel was approved in the township. And, uh, there was a lot of people here in this room that was totally filled with people totally against having uh, a puppy mill, which is kind of like what they're out on the street, what they're called. Um, and what bothers me is that. The uh, farm business category of kennel is, is an approved function of a farm that's a state law. And I think that should be, that category should be uh, broken out a little bit. There should be a breeding kennel, a boarding kennel, and maybe some other category of kennel. Because if the township is going to approve kennels, like that, and we're going to get a reputation for having uh, puppy mills, and no matter how well the operation is run, they're still being called puppy mills, you know. And if we have that kind of reputation, that's not going to be good for the township. Which brings me to a point that I think we should be allowed to vote down these kind of things because we have to do what's in the best interest of the township versus whatever the state law is. And to me, I think that's, it kind of makes, makes common sense to do that. Uh, and I, I think, you know, if you can come up with a category that says uh, we're a boarding kennel, that's fine. You know, everybody sort of understands that. But if the kind of issues that are associated with a, a breeding operation is just, I learned a lot at this zoning hearing. And they came in here for, uh, to, to have, uh, you know, some changes to their plan approved. And the board, the zoning board, basically their comment was, and I'm not going to say exactly who, but the comment was, well, I have to vote yes because the law says they're allowed. So then the, the other question is, why do we have all these boards if the law says they can do this, you know? And everybody has to say yes and approve it. You know, I think there has to be some kind of choice that a township can make to decide what they want to do for their township, not just, you know, be told that this is what the law is and, you know, why are we on these boards? So that's my comment. So, in a word, you know, there's, the Berks County had two separate in instances of puppy mills being voted down. So it's not that they can't be rejected, they can. Okay. I mean, literally this room was totally filled, standing room only, people from Lancaster, people from Reading, all people that are, you know, their issues in life is to protect animals, you know, so anyway. Okay, thank, thank you, Dave. I live on 142 Abbey Lane uh, last year. Uh, they talked of uh, putting the signs up, not having vehicles parked along the street when there's going to be snow coming. Uh, 
I don't know how far that got. I know that um, the Planning Commission had to go through with it, and I didn't know how far it got, and hopefully it didn't take a whole year. It's still not done. I don't know how far the issue got to it. Okay. Thank you. Cindy, your turn. Yeah, um, I noticed that on the agenda on the new business you have an item local service tax. Yeah. Um, so I know you, you don't entertain questions, but I would like some statements included in the minutes, Mike, <laughs> if possible. Um, and I'm hoping that those statements might be responded to when you get to the minutes. Um, number one, I'm, I'm wondering what the impetus was for something like that. Um, number two, what would this increased income be used for? What is it targeted for? Um, number three, what are the analytics or data that indicate we need it? And then how it would be used also again? Um, who else in Lancaster County in the immediate area is doing it? Um, what other sources of revenue could be used to get the same amount of money if it is indeed needed for something specific? Um, what is it going to cost in terms of personnel and resources and software, et cetera, to implement? Does anybody, you know, that's a concern that I have. And um, finally, if we do need additional income, I, I remember saying probably multiple times over the last few years, it would be nice if someone somewhere along the township, either someone who is actively involved in the board or hire someone to go out and seek business and industry as opposed to nickel and dime stuff. And, and decide who do we want Breckrock to be, um, and then what kind of business and or industry do we want in Breckrock. So those are my comments, and I would hope that maybe they would be addressed when we get to that. But if not, at least put them in the minutes, please. Thank you. Call it up. I have notes, Mike. I think I, got, <laughs> I think I got at least 90% of it. <laughs> okay, Garth. In line with what Cindy was saying, I believe that the county will be instituting a reassessment next year, which, uh, as I understand it, uh, could result in uh, additional revenues from the property tax of up to 10%. Uh, so I think, I think it might be prudent to uh, see what happens with that. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else? Now, since I've done a little research on the local tax or like local service tax, I'll I'll address that. But I'll let you just go first. Do I respond to any of your comments? I'll address Cindy. Okay. I only got my packet uh, Friday because they're only prepared by then. The same questions you have, I have because I have not had time to review that. It's in the packet and. It's going to be interesting to yeah. see. He's got all the paperwork right here, and maybe I should make sure. Yeah, that, well, it's it's not and necessarily official documents. It's notes, but what townships is doing what? Yeah, and a lot of the questions you have are I'm, I would like to hear answers to them too. So is this considered a part-timer tax that they collect for the township, or is it? No, but East Cocalico collects it every year. I know. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. And again, <coughs> just just so you know, it, I asked Carol to do some research on it. And and tonight, there's no intention tonight to make take any action on it. It's to discuss it and decide if we want to pursue it. So again, there's no intention tonight. And I'll ask the board. It's, we're not intending to take any action on anything. It's just, it's discuss the possibilities of what it would involve, what it does, how it relates to other stuff. And when we get to that part of the meeting, I do have some other information on it. But again, the intention is to discuss it only and possibly find out whether we would actually bring it up or schedule for another meeting to actually, uh, you know, take action on anything. So. Uh, do you want to address any of the other things? Yeah, I wanted to say something about it. Uh, Dave's comments. And the zoning board has to go by the rules and the law. If the law says a kennel is legal and the zoning board, like it did month before last, said no, 
the township is liable for court and, and may have to go to court because what the fellow asked for was legal and the decision was based on two people's opinion. They don't like kennels. That's, that's not a legal reason. <laughs> you know what I mean. So if it's legal according to state law, the zoning board has no choice but to approve it. Uh, it, it can't go by someone's opinion. Uh, so far as that tax, Cindy, uh, I think if we're going to have a tax, it should be a property tax. You raise the property taxes, you don't try to sneak around and implement a tax some other way. Okay. Thank you. Um, back to the gentleman, the parking issue. What is this? Well, if people know that there's a storm coming, uh, I know we had an issue with people not moving their vehicles off the street so snow plows can go through. And it's a lot easier for the snow plow drivers because I push snow at EVs and it's hard to push around the trailers and stuff mm -hmm. and work around trying to get it cleaned out. And that can't be helped with vehicles parked along the street people have rooms in their driveway or in their yard just so the snow plows can go through and keep cleaned out it's a lot easier on everybody and i didn't know what became of that from last year because there was talk of maybe putting signs up along the street saying uh snow emergency place. yeah correct did, did you address that with the plan commission we had um, I believe what I recall is we had reversed there was no parking that was placed on one side of the road if you recall and then we reversed that the board actually reversed that ordinance allowing parking on both sides I don't we had discussions about the snow emergency but I don't feel I don't recall I don't ever adopting an ordinance adopted. for that no it was discussed we discussed I, the topic but we never followed through with anything we, we felt that the people should have enough sense or maybe a neighbor yeah. would knock on her door and mention it or whatever. I know they do the same thing in my neighborhood. You get cars parked when it's snowing. It really makes a mess if it's a big snow. I think the consensus always was if it's an educational thing. If people knew it, yeah, and they would do it. So they, we talked, I guess there was consideration about a, a, an, an ordinance that would, would fine them or impound the cars if they were left there. And it's, it's, it all got down to if, they, if the people understood it they would do it so it's like um, yeah I, I think there was a letter mailed out and maybe there needs to be a, another one um, is that going to be done this year that another letter mailed out I, at this point we haven't decided that I think when the letter was sent out it was, it was a once and done thing we would have to uh, talk about it uh, you think that would make a difference oh, just yeah. remind just remind people that in snow um, to not park along the streets for plowing. And goes for everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then I'll just reiterate that um, I, I do have some other things to share when we get to the local the local tax, uh, local service tax thing. So um, I guess that will conclude our open community session. Uh, we have the minutes in our packet. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes as posted? I read the minutes and I motion, make a motion we approve the minutes. I second it. Okay, the motion was made to approve and second the minutes as they are. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we have the bills. I make a motion to pay the bills in the amount of $97,209.59. I'll second that motion. Okay, we again have the motion to approve the bills as they're listed. And it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, you have the Roadmaster's report. And we have the uh, estimate to repair the frame of the truck. For the record, we have one estimate from um, Zimomatic for approximately 15400 and we have an estimate from Garden Spot Frame and Alignment 
for $26,068. Andy, do you twenty five thousand, right? 20, did I say yeah, twenty five thousand I stand corrected. Twenty five oh six eight. Are you happy with the Zimmer Zimmermatic? Uh, yeah, I Your think work? They, yeah, I think they'll yeah, they'll be fine to work. I mean, okay. I don't have any questions there. They've always you know, worked with us with stuff and everything. So. Yeah. I noticed the garden spot they they sort of nitpicked on every little thing they charge this for. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. If, you, if you go down through there, you know, they take this apart, they charge so much, take that apart, they charge for that, whereas Zimomatic just took it apart. <laughs> the board desire to take action on the truck repairs. Yes. I make a motion we Accept the proposal of Zimomatic at fifteen thousand four hundred dollars to repair the seventy international truck. I second. Okay, the motion was made to accept um, Zimomatic's repair. It was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, I uh, moving on to the uh, um, township. Engineer's report. I met with Mike this past week and asked if there was a way we could expedite and not do the repetitious um, motions if they were all stuff that everyone didn't have a problem with and it was normal stuff. So I'll turn it over to Mike and he did kind of prepare his report and then the actions that would, would be done. And um, so he's going to read them and unless there's particular one that needs separate attention, um, I'd like to see us approve them like we do the bills, all in one motion. So unless there's any one that you want to pull out and address, so go ahead, Mike. Okay. Um, this is on page five of my engineering report. I just I list, I did a little bit of a new format um, for my discussion with uh, Jerry. Um, notes items requiring board action approval. Um, here's just for the audience. Uh, I'll go, just run through those. Um, number one is Elmer Martin Stormwater Management System. It's a release request in the amount of eight hundred and thirteen dollars and twenty cents. Item two is Allen Brubaker's Stormwater Project. That's a financial security release in the amount of two thousand three hundred and thirty-eight dollars and twenty-eight cents. Item three is Edwin Linebox Stormwater <coughs> Management. That's a release request of three hundred and thirty-eight dollars and twenty cents. Item four is Philip Sensenig Stormwater Management. That's a release in the amount of $240. Item number five is Amos Good Stormwater. That's a release request in the amount of $3,635. Number six would be Paul Hoover. That's a stormwater management agreement and also a establishing the financial security in the amount of $2,750. Item number seven is a memorandum of understanding, stormwater management agreement, and also financial security in the amount of twenty-seven hundred and fifty cents. Twenty-seven hundred, two thousand seven hundred dollars and fifty cents. I'll say that one more time. Number eight would be Aaron Zimmerman. Uh, that's a memorandum of understanding, a stormwater management agreement, and a financial security established in the amount of two thousand two hundred dollars. Number nine is Marlon Souter. And this is slightly revised from what's in your report tonight, uh, would be a memorandum of understanding, a stormwater management agreement, and a financial security in the amount of $2,200. Item number 10 is the Stoltzfus RV land development plan. This is a re request for a deferral of planning approval to Brecknock Township in Berks County, uh, primarily because the majority of the project is located within Berks County and not Lancaster. Um, that was also recommended by the Planning Commission. For approval. Number 11 is actually going to be struck from tonight's list. Um, that is because they've installed the monuments uh, on the property and those were inspected today. So they won't have to uh, post financial security for those improvements. I have two additional items uh, that I'll just read uh, tonight. Number 11 would be uh, Millstone Village Phase 2 subdivision. That's a memorandum of understanding that we received from Mr. Martin. And item 12 would be the Hawk Valley Phase 1 subdivision project, and that's for approval of the stormwater management and developers' agreements. Uh, I 
a question, Mike. Uh, sure. The memorandum of understanding with the developer's agreement. It's a developer's agreement with Hawk Valley. What does that include? Uh, the developer's agreement is what's required from any land development or subdivision. Um, that basically outlines what the approvals were as part of that subdivision. It also uh, references all of the improvements that are associated with that development. So the sidewalks, the road system, etc. Um, includes legal descriptions. It, it's a fairly standard agreement that we require for all developments. Um, Bill, Bill and I have gone back and forth with the attorney from Hawk Valley on that. We've reviewed it. Um, we had some comments. We provided those to their attorney. They addressed um, our comments satisfactory, satisfactorily. Um, and the same would hold true for the stormwater agreement. That outlines the ownership and maintenance of the stormwater facilities. Now, do they have to post the financial security? Is that part of it? Yes, that's actually noted in the developer's agreement, what that amount would be. What is that amount? Um, I mean, if, if we're, or, I it's think approximately $3 million. Okay. It's a slightly over $3 million. Okay. And then they also have to satisfy the sewer authority? That's correct. Yes, that, that's outlined in there as well. Basically outlines all the approvals that they have to get prior to uh, moving forward with the project. That would include the sewer authority. So they have to pay that monies up front that they agree. Correct. And so far as the park and rec. That's also noted in there as They well. have to pay that up front also. Correct. Which is? $700 per lot. $700 per lot. Times, times 71, 71 lots. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There will be no plan recorded without those things being right. provided. provided. Yeah. I just wanted to be. No, that's fine. Yeah. Wanted to Good bring questions. that out that they are going to have to pay some money, yes. On the Hawk Valley Developers Agreement, uh, the, under the MPC for security, uh, financial security, uh, there are three types that are mentioned in the code, letter of credit, bond, or money escrow. This certainly would not be a money escrow type of situation, but um, Hawk Valley developers have requested the uh, bond as opposed to the letter of credit, which we would normally see. We have had some projects that have had a bond, Boulder Hill, and there were one or two others. Um, they uh, are preferring the bond because it's less costly in the market today. Letters of credit seem to be you know, more of a financial cost um, to developers, and that's the main reason for it. Um, we can draft the bond to protect you know, the township just in case there's some kind of a default, but it's a little bit of a different mechanism than the letter of credit. So I just wanted to point that out, that, that was a change. Well, Additionally, you know, there's also a, uh, an amount in the financial security that uh, Mike would typically ask for for administrative purposes, inspections mostly. Um, I forget the percentage that you would normally have, uh, use for that. In, in a, three percent? Three. Yeah, three, sometimes five, depending which got, on the amount. Which would be about $72,000 in this particular right. project. However, given the magnitude of the project, Mike and I thought <clears throat> there should be some way, if it's needed, you know, for the number of man hours that Tecticon will in all likelihood be spending out there, that there is a possibility and the ability of the township to seek more cost to be recuperated from the developer if Tecticon spends more than that $72,000. So we did add some language in the agreement to address that. Thank you. Uh, what constitutes a default on their part? According to well, the if, they don't, if they don't put in the uh, required improvements. But for what period of time? The contract, the developer's agreement says uh, three years. In three years, they need to complete the project or come to the township and seek additional time to complete it. Now, does that mean? 71 houses within three years? No, it means the primarily the stormwater infrastructure, water, infrastructure, infrastructure streets, yeah, that streets, kind of curbs, sidewalks. Because homes don't. Mm -hmm. I understand. So, yeah. Storm sewers. Yeah. So I mean, the, and the, the escrow is primarily the financial security is there to ensure that, especially those development improvements that are going to be offered for dedication to us. In this case, I think it's the streets are the streets only system. ones. Yeah. The stormwater facilities are not going to be dedicated to the township, but uh, we want to make sure that we have some uh, ability to put the roads in. If they haven't been put in, and if they haven't been put in correctly after inspection by Mike, that they be done correctly. 
do they have? Yes. I have a question. I think it's for Mike. Um, what happens if these agreements are made and then Landmark sells to someone else? Do these agreements all remain intact or must there be renegotiation or do they start all over again? I think they, they travel yeah. with the, 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 the language uh, says that the um, uh, agreements are binding on the successors, heirs, and assigns of the parties. So that's what governs, and they get recorded in the courthouse. So if somebody buys, you know, these these uh, pieces of property, this real estate, then that entity would be bound by the agreement. Okay, unless you want to handle the last item, Hawk Valley, separately, I would entertain a motion to accept all the items, all 12 items that the township engineer has prepared for, for action. You made that motion? No, I would entertain a motion. I would accept the motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept these uh, uh, items that uh, Mike has detailed here. I'm second it. Okay, the motion was made and second to approve the items that the engineer has provided. And there was second, so those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I would just want to make one comment regarding, I don't have a problem with the setting the financial security in a blanket motion, but if we have plans that come forth with waivers, they should be dealt with individually. So that there's fair discussion between the developer and the okay. owner and the board okay. and the community. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Okay, next we have, um, I guess our uh, zoning report is in our packet. Any discussion? The motion we accept the zoning report. Well, let's include the solicitor yet and then do all of them. Okay. Do we have any uh, report from the solicitor? Uh, just the Norman Zimmerman agreement. Uh, he had been here at a previous meeting uh, asking for you know, the release uh, of the uh, financial security that he had $55,113.91. Um, stating that he didn't have any intentions presently to uh, complete the project. The board had instructed me to prepare the agreement, you know, allowing him you know, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, have the financial security release, but should he in the future have intentions to, to build before his building permits are secured, he'd have to put in place the financial security, and of course there would have to be a reevaluation of the cost that's associated with that through Technicon. Their cost estimate has to be provided and reviewed by Technicon and um, provided to the township. So that is uh, has been uh, prepared, forwarded to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman. Uh, apparently, they have signed the document and is uh, present for your uh, action this evening. Okay. I make a motion we release the sum of fifty-five thousand one hundred thirteen dollars and ninety-one cents to uh, Zimmerman's. I have a question. Go ahead. Let's say it goes, and it could, eight, ten years. And in the meantime, our stormwater changes, uh, he has to pick up on the new, and that, yeah. that's explained yes. in this agreement. I didn't read every bit of it. Yeah. Well, there's, well, a, there's actually notes on the plan, too, Art. Um, that actually address any changes to the to the stormwater management agreement that they would have to revise or update. Not that um, they come back and say, well, I should be grandfathered because I had original from back then. Okay. Yeah. I will second the motion. Okay, will you repeat that motion? Yeah, I make a motion that we release to the Zimmermans $55,113.91. Okay, we had a uh, motion made to release the uh, funds he had, and it was second. So those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, do we have a, a motion to re uh, accept all the reports from? I make a motion that we accept the Roadmaster Engineer SEO zoning as presented. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion to accept them, and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Okay, we have the in, in new business. Well, okay, the, the park and rec board. Is there anything to report on that? Okay, there's nothing in our packet, so there's nothing under old or old business. And under new business, we have a uh, Hawk Valley street light resolution. Is this something you can explain, Bill? Yes, under the uh, second class township code, uh, upon petition of the owner of a real estate, uh, a lighting district can be created by the township and the cost of the electricity for the required street lighting, which was mandated or required under the uh, under the subdivision ordinance, in this case would have been the county subdivision ordinance, uh, land development ordinance for street lighting, uh, the cost of the electricity and maintenance can be um, assessed to the property owners by having this petition presented to the uh, board and then a resolution passed you know, that, that would establish the uh, street light district. We've done this before. I think Boulder Hill was the, the most recent one. Um, and uh, then when uh, the properties are occupied, that the individual lots, in this case on a per lot basis, um, they would be assessed a, uh, an amount uh, annually for the uh, the electricity to operate the uh, lighting system. So you need action on resolution one or 2016-8. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion we approve uh, resolution 2016-8. I will second it. Okay. We had the motion to approve that resolution. It was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those. Motion carries. Okay, next next in the item we have something that I asked Carol to do some research on because I am looking for ways to increase revenue in the township and I'd like to see it obviously I'd like to see it with increased businesses, but we tend to have a problem attracting businesses and that's something I hope um, possibly made budget money for next year and we get the Planning Commission involved more in an um, intensive project of trying to um, identify what ways the township can attract more business. Currently um, we have a limited amount of commercial area which is basically not covered by sewer and I don't know why um, our last 537 plan didn't include uh, some commercial property and allocated some capacity for that, but that's beside the point. Um, basically, the township has operated in a deficit the last couple years. The last two years, the township operated as a deficit. The five out of the last eight years, we operated as a deficit. And eight out of the last 13 years, we once had a very healthy uh, capital fund um, that exceeded approximately one and a half times our budget. Um, and there's a number of reasons why it depleted. I can say the police force, I can say a couple of hard winners, I can say paying off the park. I mean, they, they all um, basically, and I'm not here to attack any personal, any one of previous boards, I'm just stating the facts. Um, in 2003, we had an all-time, or 2002, we had an all-time high, approximately 150% of our budget in, in a, actually as a carryover surplus. By the time the police department was closed down in 2007, that was cut in half. Now, just, just last, the other week, someone asked me, whatever happened to the money that we used to spend on the police force? It's like, well, it was coming out of our capital reserve. A lot of it was. It, uh, in my opinion, the police force was not sustainable in 2007 or 2006 when it finally uh, was closed down. But the, but the thing then, from that point on till 2015, we then cut that capital reserve in half again. And um, so we are at our very lowest we've ever, well, we've ever been as far as having a surplus rainy day fund. And I'm looking for ways, long-term, short-term, to bring more money back for our roads, 
uh, bring more services and, all, and actually start building up that res uh, cash reserve again so that uh, if we do have to go to police force sometime, I mean, I just thought Mike and I just talked this week with, with uh, the North Maple Ridge and with the golf course, possibly in the next five years, we could have 180 more families in our township. I, I don't know if, uh, if we'll ever have another police force, and it may not be if, it's just a matter of when, because I, I hear a lot of uh, complaints in the developments. Uh, presently, we can't afford it, and we won't if we continue, if we don't do something different. I, I knew that um, the local service tax is something that's placed on people that work in the township. If we have residents that work in East Earl, they're paying East Earl's local service tax. If we have people working in, in, in uh, West Earl, they're paying West Earl's. West Earl and Earl Township, New Holland Borough, and majority of townships in Lancaster County charge the maximum amount, $52 a year. It comes off their paycheck, $1 a week. Now, we, we, we as a board can set that. Currently, it's $10 a year. Brecknock collects is ten, $10 a year from each person who works in Brecknock. It doesn't matter whether they live here or not, it's that they work in Brecknock. We don't have to set that at 52. We can set that whatever we want. We can set it to 20, 30, 40, 50. But by far, majority, and, and just looking through a, a recent printout of the uh, local service taxes in Lancaster County, I'm guessing 85% or higher do the full amount, $52. So I wanted to just discuss this tonight not intention, not no intentions of actually asking the board to make a decision, but actually maybe suggest that we should think about it, see what would have to be done if we would decide next month or the following month to actually want to make a decision on it. This tax would not affect fixed income people. And I don't haven't done the math yet to determine exactly what it would bring in. All it would do would be equal the playing field to the same people that work in Earl, East Earl, West Cocalico, or whatever, and they, we would basically be taxing the people in, who work in Brecknock the same as they get taxed everywhere else. Now, the only two townships that I could point out that, that are still at $10 is Brecknock and Carnarvon. Well, we know Carnarvon takes in millions of dollars over the years from the landfill. Now, you, uh, you say, well, it, it is limited to what they use that for. They just can't use it for anything, but it does help to release the pressure on a lot of their stuff. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm anxious to the next year or two to try to get uh, a, a little better economy in our township, a little more revenue available, um, more, more money for our, our roads and our streets, and hopefully, then, you know, we can start building back up in the opposite direction than what we've done for the past eight, ten years. Um, so, as far as one of the questions I think was asked was, what would it be used for? The same thing the ten dollars is now would just be increased to fifty-two dollars. And I think till next meeting, we could find out exactly what that would amount to. I don't know how many employees work in. Brecknock Township, but, and I don't know if we can determine how many work in Brecknock Township and live in Brecknock Township, how many work in Brecknock Township and don't live in Brecknock Township, because obviously they don't live in Brecknock. I wouldn't have any uh, problem, you know, them paying the tax. And I, and, and I have been hearing, Levi and I were out in the job, or out in the meeting last week, and they, the a resident said they were happy to pay more if they could have police service. Well, we don't, it's not, the police service is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a, a number of steps. And I'm proposing a, a PP step here, a baby step, that this is something we might consider. It would have to be, and maybe I'll, I'll give Bill some time to explain exactly what that process would be, but it would have to be done in the next couple of months to go into effect January 1st. So that's the reason I asked Carol to do some research. I've, you know, crunch some numbers, um, the township needs more revenue. If it's going to provide services, it's going to keep the roads going, 
Um, fortunately, it seems like we're going to have a decent, we had a decent uh, mild winter last year. I hope we're on track to stay within our budget this year. It'll be the first in, you know, in three years. So I'll, if anyone has questions, I, I'll answer what I can. But again, this was just meant to throw it out. I'm glad you just picked up on it because the idea would be that if we decide to go further, next meeting you would have a chance to to bring more comments so yes cindy so what is the township budget and what is in our capital reserve right now the township budget this past year uh and again i'm throwing numbers out carol's not here i think it was 1.2 our capital reserve coming into this year was um 386,000. and bill what's allowable by law for the capital reserve percentage compared to the budget? I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd have to look at that. I don't know. But in the past, we've had well over a million dollars in capital reserve. Now, I don't I don't know what's a healthy fund. I, my gut feeling is six months of your budget would be a, a decent reserve. I, I guess I have two other questions <coughs> slash comments. I guess if, if you know, I, I appreciate wanting to build up the capital reserve, well, I'm sure there is a limit. It's not like a school district. There's only a certain amount you can have them in the capital reserve fund, which is the way it goes. Um, but if this was an issue, I'm wondering why some of the other boards did not, I guess the Consumer Commission, for one, did not insist that um, Walt Valley pay all the money they could owe us. Well, that's nothing new with the Nothing new? Is that proposed? Okay. My second question is, um, if you say it won't affect a fixed income person, how can you do that? My it's understanding was when we asked about um, different sources and different amounts of money being paid, say, for the sewer, and one of the suggestions was to give people a fixed income a discount. We were told you can't do that when it comes to a payment that everybody pays the same. This is something the employer, the employee, no, the employer, takes off each paycheck and if if for instance if we go fifty two dollars and, and they're paid every two weeks they'll take two dollars off every week if we decide to go thirty six dollars they divide it by their paychecks and that's what they right, take I off get that. you said it would not affect people on a fixed income i mean people that don't, that, don't, that aren't currently drawing income you mean working employment working employment yeah yes i, I think there's a disconnect here um, what she's asking and what you're answering okay, okay. is that when people are on a fixed income, they're not employed, and it's only employees. If you're working, you're not on fixed income. You it should be. be. <laughs> well, yeah, it affects the salary. Yeah. And that's what why I asked about. What no, is, that's fine. You know, in that's terms fine. of what does it cost to implement, because this is not just a quick one, two, three, we add up how many people live here, how many people work here, and all of a sudden, here's the number that comes up. There is a lot more that goes into something like that, and I think you have to take into the cost, into consideration the cost of implementation. Currently, it's already implemented. Implement. They're just doing ten dollars, and they do it in one. one when, when they reach, when an employee reaches a certain threshold on their salary, it's t currently it's all ten dollars taken off. That's mm -hmm. the way it had always been. And we get what five or? No, I think we get the full amount. But it used to be called the occupational privilege tax. Yeah, I was just going to say it used to be called the occupational mm -hmm. privilege tax, and they changed it to the Emergency Management Services Act, and they changed it to the Local Services. And um, you had asked Cindy about how is it used. Well, there are restrictions under the what's called the Pennsylvania Local Tax Enabling Statute. And I'll read them to you. The, it says, any municipality driving f funds from the local services tax may only use the funds for, <coughs> one, emergency services, which shall include emergency medical services, police services, and or fire services. Two, road construction and or maintenance. Three, reduction of property taxes, and four, mm -hmm. property tax relief through implementation of a homestead and farmstead exclusion in accordance with a particular statute that they refer to. It says a municipality shall use no less than 25% of the funds derived from the local services tax for emergency services. So that's 
That's the section specifically dealing with the restrictions of the use of the money generated by that. So 25% 20, would go to the fire company? Could. Could. Or, or any least of those that categories yeah. that yeah. fall within yeah. what they define as emergency services, police, fire, medical. No. Read that again, what you just read. 25% shall? At least 25%. Ms. Pally shall use shall. no less, no less no than 25%. Yes, so fire and uh, ambulance would get 25%. Now, was it, let me interrupt you just a second. The whole idea of police. I don't know if anybody reads our newspaper. Police cost the surrounding townships around six to seven hundred thousand dollars a year. The cheapest one is one township that only has a couple of people in and they pay two hundred thousand dollars a year. It's in the newspaper every year when people set their budget, when the township set their budget. For us to get six hundred thousand dollars if we had a police force or even if we join with someone else we're still going to pay somewhere around that five hundred six hundred thousand dollars a year. There is absolutely no way we're going to be able to generate that kind of money without massive tax increases. And I understand that, and I guess that's my concern. I mean, who wouldn't want every service that you could possibly get? I mean, that's just a common sense kind of an item. But on the other hand, I'll come to these meetings and I hear, for instance, Jerry, today you said, well, somebody talked to you and Levi about it. I would like these people who want the police to come to these meetings and publicly state it. I'm not doubting that someone spoke to you about it, but if it's not important for them, then they should come here and voice it, just like the rest of us do. Because in reality, if one or two people have spoken to you, that's one thing. If 300 people have spoken to you, that's a different thing. And then that, that gives me an impetus to maybe move my position one way or the other. But with lack of information, that's not the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle the situation. So I would suggest that people be encouraged to come to a meeting and say, here is what I would like to see happen. Understanding full well what kind of money it's going to cost. I know those figures. I get that. But I'm not so sure that it is the wish of the majority of people in the township. So oh, because I, they don't come here and say that. I can't remember the last time I heard somebody walk in a meeting in this township at any level and say, I want a police force. I think three years ago, one person came in. That was about I, I don't disagree with you. I, I, and I, I think I talked to a number of people. I think if we put it in the ballot tomorrow, it would get voted down. But this board is responsible for the safety of the community. And if one part of it is, is becoming so unsafe that we start having theft and crime, it falls back on us. And what do we do? What do we do? That's where I, I don't have the answers. But I, I, I see that I'm, I'm more concerned about being able to keep our roads safe by by the, the maintenance on them, I, I can read you articles from the uh, Lancaster Road Line as, as th three four years ago where they've gone on saying Brecknock has cut his their road maintenance fund three years in a row. We we've had we've constantly cut back on some of our our road maintenance to to stay an even keel, and it, we just can't keep doing that. We we're going to have to start making that up over the past fifty. 15 years, we've, we've averaged about 320,000 on our roads. I think this year we're only doing about 250. Um, you know, an average over 15 years is, is, is an average. I mean, it's a good indication of what you're going to need for the next 15 years, and, we're, and we can't meet that. Do you, does anybody know what we take in for property tax in this township? Arthur, you, you would have a pretty good uh, idea. It's about 120,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 120 pounds <clears throat> there, with our current rate of taxes. The majority so, is coming through the earned income tax. So, so for us to uh, right, that's how we get most of our money through the earned income. For us to, to generate an additional six hundred thousand dollars for a police force, you can imagine what it would take in the way of a property tax increase. I don't think we're ever going to think along those terms of raising the property taxes to pay for a police force. I think we get a little more funds in, um, in helping get the roads healthy, keeping them healthy. I think we, we try to increase and make businesses more attractive along Stonehill Road in some way. Uh, we may have to try to get a sewer service there and, and get, some, get some jobs in Brecknock Township. You know, it doesn't always take the president to, to 
bring the jobs. I think we got to do a little bit of our part. I look back and I think uh, Keith Brubacher brought more jobs in Brecknock Township than the board has in the past. There's a question. <laughs> Comment. Yes. The, the $10 tax, uh, which has been in effect up until this year, was not a township tax. That was a school board tax. And also, I, I would dispute the, your, your claim about reducing road maintenance. I think the reason we wound up with less retained income at the end of some years was because we felt that the money would do us more good on the road than in the bank. Where I see where it well, that, I, and, and I didn't mean to, to necessarily target any particular thing. I said that it was a combination of the police force, it was a combination of a couple bad winners, and it was a combination of, of paying off the park. But, but you said we were cutting back when we I, uh, let me read we, November which we didn't do until this year. We November eleventh. November eleventh. Lancaster online. Um, by Patrick Burns. Uh, to keep expenses down, supervisors significantly cut highway spending for the third straight year. You read it, you believe everything you read in the paper? Well, I don't want to get into an argument. I'm just saying that I, I base decisions upon what I what I read. In December 12, 2012, the board had significantly cut highway spending the three previous years, including a, 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 a cut of 5.4 percent. Um, Four years ago. I know. I, I'm I'm just seeing this. This has not just been a, a gradual. I mean, this has not been an instant just dive off. It's just been kind of a a gradual thing over the past couple of years and, and I don't know I, I this is not going to be my decision it's going to be a board decision I don't know if the the, the uh, 386,000 that we carry over this past year is considered a healthy um, capital surplus or not I mean maybe it is no you made the and, and nothing wrong with it. you made the point about Raising the real estate taxes, maybe someday, the possibility to put towards the police department, uh, to our solicitor. We can only raise our real estate tax a small percentage at a time. It's so small, it would take us years to get us to that point to where we could afford a police department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, it'll take years. Anyway, see, take none of us, gains, none so. of us see it. Ha I don't see it happen in these five years, and maybe even ten years. But do we start trying to maybe get in a better position? I don't. I, 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 I think, think the people that say they'd be willing to pay more don't understand. They don't understand well, the situation. They don't understand what it costs, and they don't understand what it would cost every one of the people in the township and possibly I know we do have some people in the township that have money or, or are well off but there's a lot of people in the township are not well off and, and don't have those kind of incomes that they could afford to. now Leroy there <laughs> <laughs> well Leroy since there. you said that I'll make another comment but not related to that I think I mean you're talking Police, but there's lots. Of, I mean, equipment. Yeah, yeah, we know that. We know that. Uh, uh, every year it's getting yeah. a year older. We know that. So how old's your oldest truck, Andy? Uh, 90. What is that? That's 87. That brings so up. So that brings up something I wanted to old. say to Andy. Can, can you uh, wait till we're done with this discussion? Yeah, maybe, please. <laughs> okay. Because so, anyway, uh, we're going to talk okay. about the garage doors soon. <laughs> maybe you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 What's that? Is there I, any way that Bretonock Township could say something to the police force? Like, we've had neighbors call for an issue, and it, they, they, they do. Call. They call, and and I've been I've received emails from some irate <coughs> residents that claim that the police force ignores them and, and prioritizes stuff, and they're not interested in a squabble where a four wheeler is going down the road without a license plate. They they have to prioritize their calls, and and ours are some of the, the Petty things. We the house was egged. And they called the police. Someone complained about noise. The neighbor took the muffler off the four wheeler and parked it outside and ran it. Whenever you have that many people 
in one community, there's going to be problems, and it's like, how are we going to handle them problems? And I thank Levi's comment. It's not, and again, this this uh, increase in revenue for the township isn't just for the police. Right now, it's just trying to 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 maybe get a little more coming in and have a little more uh, uh, leeway, and, and and simply because, in some ways, I could say, and you can look. Most most townships do the full fifty-two dollars a year. And I'll get to you. So. All of our residents that don't work in Brecknock are paying it to someone else. And so I'm just saying this would be a way to just simply be level the playing field across all townships in Lancaster County. Ours is no different than anyone else. And it'd just be a start. But yes, back there. Uh, question. Now, how, how much do we pay the, uh, the state police, if, if anything, for their service? Arthur, you might know. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. That comes out. state might come to that. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, there's, we're always threatened to. They've to, been talking that way for 25 <laughs> years. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's not yeah, going to It's not going to happen. Really learn. <laughs> we, we pay it. Everybody pays it in the state. Okay. I, was, I was hoping maybe, um, and we'll give Bill a chance to explain the process, that maybe we could take the next step. Uh, do what it does. Do what it takes to advertise and present a resolution, and then next meeting the board could could decide whether they want to go. And, and I and I don't care either way. I'm I, I certainly will say that if it's not a favorable thing, I, I will not have any problem. But Bill, what would be the process that if the board would want to make a decision to go forward? There is a required ordinance to be adopted under the Local Tax Enabling Act. The Department of Community and Economic Development needs to be notified by December 1 that you adopted the ordinance. Have to be adopted before it has to be just adopted December. before that so that you December get on the rolls. Okay. Okay. So that's the time requirement. So your latest month that you could adopt would be November. Okay. You have to advertise three consecutive weeks under the state law. Okay. As opposed to one or two, like you see in zoning or other yeah. municipal ordinances, so you have that to build into the whole, you know, uh, procedure okay. framework for when you want to do it. <coughs> so um, okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and there are certain things you have to have in your ordinance under the statute. For example, um, if you exceed ten percent of a local services tax. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Not ten percent. Ten dollars. Um, those individuals making less than twelve thousand dollars are exempted. So that's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are certain categories of taxpayers who are exempt. Uh, those who have uh, served in the military and have been injured or disabled um, by their service. And there are some things you have to specifically have in as far as the collection of it and that, that type of thing. The maximum, like you say, is, is fifty-two dollars. No matter how many municipalities are involved in collecting, you know, the whole process, we don't have currently local services tax ordinance. We don't have one here. Okay. Garth is correct. Yeah. The ten dollars that you see on the report is from the school district. There's also language in the statute that um, provides for how that, if you, for example, if you went to 52, yeah. how it's shared with the school district. Um, as I read the, the statute, the school district would have five dollars, and we would get the rest. So it would be forty-seven and five. Now, when you read that, it doesn't to me that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if the school district has already been charging ten dollars. Carol and I have been talking about this. But I did talk with the solicitor of the school district, and he, he concurs with my reading of it that the way it reads is they lose their ten dollars. Then they go to five. No, no I, yeah. Okay. Well, we had the research just a little bit more to see if we could, you know, still allow the school district to ten dollars. I I haven't looked into all of that, but just to clarify, we don't have an existing local services tax current. And that ten dollars that's being assessed is my guess. It goes back to when the school district assessed an occupational privilege tax. That would be my guess. I I haven't done that research, but. Um, and that's essential to the procedure. You need the ordinances, you need, need to properly advertise, you have to get a notification in writing to the Department of Community Economic Development by December 1. So the advertising for three consecutive weeks 
cost us money. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is something we would pursue, we should decide next month whether or not we want to follow up with doing the advertising so the ordinance could be then ready. Advertise for November. For November. Question. How many employees approximately does Blue Blockers have? Uh, at this point, I don't know, but uh, approximately 300. Okay, because he's probably the largest employer in the township. I wouldn't know. I don't Redding. know what Reading Body has, you know, between the two plants. I have no idea. Oh, What's that? Up here, Lippert. Do they not have well, too many employees? Yeah, yeah they're sort of tied in the Reading Party. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know either. Just an idea. Well, Even well, then, uh, uh, Levi, just an approximate guess. You say a, a, only a quarter of them have probably live in Brecon? Oh, I doubt that that many do. Even less than that. Less so, than, yeah. right now, the $10 that uh, is, was the occupational privilege. It's going strictly to the school district, and, and, the, and the township's getting nothing. That's right. And if we would go to twenty dollars or thirty, if we would Im implement the local s service tax at whatever amount. The school district will get five, and we'll get the balance. That's if they ask for it, Bill. Isn't that correct? If who asks for it? That's if the school district asks for it. I think they would get it, <laughs> as, as the statute says, it's, it's, it's pro, prorated under they're, the... They're getting 10 now. I know they're getting 10. Yeah, I thought yeah. that's done away with. No, the school still, has, still gets 10. Now, we were talking about what the statute says, you and I are talking yes. about, that mm -hmm. says that $5 is what, if we would assess it, the way I read it, and the school district attorney agreed with me, if we would assess a $52 or a $42 um, local services tax, yeah, right. we would get all of it but five dollars. The question is, can can we in some way you know, adopt an ordinance that would allow for the school district to continue to get the ten? I don't know the answer to that sitting here today, but that would be something we, need, we would need to follow up on. Well, I guess the question I would have for the board is: Is this something we're willing to move table till next meeting? And then um, we can get feedback from the community, feedback from the audience for next month, and, and it will be put on next month agenda to. Uh, and Bill would have to give those and get those answers for you then. Yeah, until but then as well. we would not advertise for anything right. until after after next the month. October. Right. Yeah. I can provide a sample of an ordinance that's been adopted by the municipality that sets forth a lot of the mandatory provisions. Ordinance. Um, I'll get that to you before October's meeting. But Does it sound like something we could work with? Boy. No, I'm, I'm not interested in, in raising the taxes. That's all I can say. Well, right now I'm just asking. Well, obviously, if you don't even want to move it till next month to discuss it. Um, We could get additional information for next month as to possibly how many employees um, that work in the township and don't live in the township, because obviously they would simply then be paying whatever other township pays and we would be the benefit of it. Well, we have six employees right here that don't, that in, don't in live the township. Some <clears throat> in the township. Well, I, I'd like to table this and put it on the agenda for next month to, uh, to, the, to actually then have a vote next month whether or not we should uh, pursue um, an ordinance and initiate it or not. So it would be a, a yes or no vote next month as far as whether or not this is something we should pursue. So I'll make that as a motion. Is there a second to that motion? kind of tax on our people because we had per capita tax years ago and remember we'd done away with that. And, uh, I don't know. 
what think about it. an employee? I mean, if you go down the back road and you have a family that owns a greenhouse and five of their, their kids work for them, are they employees? Each kid pays the tax? Yeah. The, the employer is required, you know, to report. There's a whole whole uh, section in the in the act having to do with reporting requirements of the employer and not you know people. Paid. Pardon me? Because they're not getting paid. Seems to be that's that's a, well, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the limit would be $12,000. Uh, okay, I was just going to say, you know, if you are making less than $12,000, there's a mechanism that somebody <coughs> can file the necessary information to show that they're not meeting that threshold income level. So, what about if you're, if you're, you spend two weeks out of the month not in the town, you're out on the road somewhere, and you're actually working someplace else, even though you're, your place of appointments here in the town, too. I think if your employer is here, this is where you would be considered to be an employee. We, we mean like yes. I worked in Philadelphia, and when we were out of town, we could file a form with City Hall and get the refund. Same here. For those days, we got the money back. I'd have to take a look. That, that's a very specific sure question. There. Yeah, there, there, are, there is a section specifically regarding refunds, but I, I'll check that. Well, so, you, Bill, just one other thing. So you're saying today, even if someone's making less than 12000 they pay $10. At least if we would initiate the local tax uh, service tax, they would be exempt then if they're less than twelve thousand dollars from any of it. I don't know what the school district's doing regarding okay. the collection okay. of their okay. occupational privilege tax. I don't know. Bill, uh, an employee would not have to pay this services tax to two municipalities. So if, if somebody lives in Japip and works in Brecknock, and Japip has a local services tax. They don't get double dose. They don't no. get any money no. from them. Yeah. The maximum they can, an individual can, if you go 52, the maximum that person is required to pay is 52. You can't, you can't get that times two, you know, depending on the municipalities. Now, did you say if they live or they work in Tapit? What did you say? I, I said if they live outside the township and work in the township, I think if their home township has a services tax, that takes preeminence over any similar. I tax thought that we I would thought have. it was based upon employment in where that you township where, where you're working. Yeah, yeah, you well, Bill, you. That's why. That's why I believe. Okay, I can clarify that. With, that that's not what that, that. I can clarify that. Get that information to, to you. What? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it's where you work. Yeah, you understand. It's where you work. It's not where you live. I pay it for the city, for example. I don't live in the city. I live in a yeah. suburb. I, I think we owe it to our citizens to pursue every means possible to, um, and if this is a way to, um, even if the majority of people don't live in Brecknock but work in Brecknock and everyone else pays it, um, I'd, I'd like to see us at least uh, spend some time thinking about it. But there, are, but there are, you know, provisions in the Act that cover those kinds of questions yeah. about the interplay between the municipalities and the employers, and I can't cite chapter and verse this evening, but there are Who collects provisions. this? Tax collector, Lancaster County Tax Collection. And what amount of paperwork, if any, is done through our office? Very minimal. I mean, we once the ordinance is done, then it's it's done. I mean, it's then the employer's responsibility to submit it to the Lancaster County Tax Collection Bureau. They are the ones who disperse the funds accordingly. One thing we do not want to do is overload this office with paperwork that we have to look to hire another secretary someday. That would be very helpful. Because then it wouldn't pay at all. No. So, if I don't hear a second shortly, we'll uh, move on. I'm just not convinced at this point. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. We can bring it up uh, some other time if we so led. So. Okay, next on our agenda. Garage door. Garage doors. We've been waiting for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I just wanted to tell Andy I really appreciated that memorandum 
that you came up with about the condition of the trucks. Oh, yes. I mean, that was very well done. It was something we needed to do and look at. That's what I've been saying for a while, I guess. Okay, um, there's, uh, there's a couple uh, uh, proposals in our packet for, um, from actually three different manufacturers of overhead doors. And I don't know if they're, I think they're rated in the level of the most economical to the most expensive. Um, so Shank has provided a proposal. Uh, I think there was, um, the, the one proposal was to do three. <coughs> Correct? Yeah, I'm in the proposal for three and then there's an and option the, for all seven. And the net is a total of three. And then there's a, an option to um, install um, additional ones. Right here. Is the yeah, yeah, but here's the. Yeah. Any discussion? Well, I, mean, I, I have a spreadsheet there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Which well, should summarize it. The, uh, yeah, I'm going to say the shank door has the best R value, but it's a one year warranty. Whereas the most expensive, which is overhead door, has a 10 year warranty. The Rister garage door has a three year warranty. They're not as quite a, as good a R value. Shank, so Shank has the best R value, but the shortest warranty. And they're the cheapest. I think originally, Arthur, you brought this up about the doors. What are your um, comments and thoughts on this? Well, I think we were talking about <laughs> trucks, and you brought up doors. <laughs> no, I imagine the warranty. What could the warranty pertain to? The hinges, the rails, the springs, rails. Okay. And you know, Carol pointed out to me that. We, we don't have any problems with the, our doors now so far as things going wrong with them. They're not used all that much, a couple times a day max. So probably the difference between a one-year and a three-year warranty when you consider there's a $6,000 difference if you buy all seven. So. I think we initially talked about just doing one. At least one. Yeah. At least I one. thought they'd be more expensive. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't you? expect uh, to get garage doors of that size at that price. You know. So are you? Are you? Would you favor doing the three in the upper end? I, I'm hesitant to do all seven. I, I think you yeah, know we're right. we're, um, we're we're you know I said we we struggle to stay in the in the black the whole year previously I'd like to stay in the black this year and I don't want this to break um. well there is an advantage to doing the three on this end this is the end where the shops in and if they have to do any maintenance they do it in this end of the garage uh, there is controlled thermostats for these three bays and the other four so, it doesn't matter if you have to just do these three, keep this warmer for maintenance and for something that may start a little hard or something, and keep the other four doors cooler, and then it'll make no difference. Okay. So, these three doors are the most important at this point. Now, the, the base price here, does that include the windows to match what we currently have? No, it'll be a few of They'd be fewer windows. But now, is the windows an add to this price? Of no, no. That's a okay, okay. 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 Um, and you might be three. I was thinking it's just. Well, prices include three 12 by 24 windows in, in each 12 foot <coughs> wide door, four windows in the 14 wide door. The first three, are they all 12s or are they some? Okay, the first three are all 12s. Okay. 
I think I think the consensus is we would favor three, so I'll entertain a motion. But no, I would really prefer that we did all mm -hmm. seven. I'm to I make a motion that we get the three doors for the three bays near the office here from Shank Door, which is a total cost of $4,571. Okay, I'll second that motion. We had a motion to do the three at the price he listed, and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. I oppose. I think we should do the seven. Your comments are noted. Thank you. Well, yours. Yes, comments. Okay. We have um, a, mem a memo from Carol concerning a software upgrade to um, go to QuickBooks Pro. Um, I could support that. I think it'd be a good idea. The only concern I have is an, is an open-ended contract. Is there any way... But it's we, pretty much going to be whatever I need. Like, I pretty much control how much she would be used. True. And the other part of it, too, is, you know, she admitted when speaking with her, you know, if, if, if you're pretty much computer <coughs> literate, mm -hmm. it'll be a whole lot less time. And I've done a lot of research on this over the last year. I've been kind of messing with it already. The, they have a, a trial out there you can do. Obviously, I would use her as very little as possible. It would just be for the initial setup. Well, my, my wife and I are both familiar with QuickBooks Pro, and a lot of local um, businesses use it. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'd maybe recommend that um, um, our auditor Weinholt and Nichols. They, they support it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, but you might want to just maybe consult with them and how you set it up so it's beneficial to yeah. giving them simply a file and they can do the audit that way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, is there a motion to... No, I'll uh, make a motion. We accept this. Uh, I second it. Okay. The motion was a... Uh, made and second to purchase the upgrade and the support and and try to get it up and running by January 1st. All those in favor say aye. 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 And no. oh. Thank you. Motion carries. One comment back on the seven doors, Mel. Yes, sir. I'd like to see what these three look like, how they work, mm -hmm. you know, uh, before we move forward and replace the other ones. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something we won't like about them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it'll be that much of a big difference in price, but just to make sure. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to get it all done at one time. I realize the first three are the most important, but I still would like, if, if we have the people here, let's get them all done. That's, that was my contention. Okay, is there any other uh, items for the good of the township? Includes our motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye.